This video is sponsored by Dell Technologies. Find out more at the end of the video. Hey there guys, Zach here for Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Power Toys for Windows 10. This is an app Microsoft is building for, well, Windows 10 that enhances the experience with new features and functions that aren't in the operating system by default. Uh, so let's not waste any time, let's dive straight in. I've already got Power Toys installed here, it's in my start menu, and we already have it running. So to configure it, we come down to the system tray here, right click on the Power Toys icon and select settings. And that will take us to the Power Toys settings window. So we're in the general area here, and as you can see, there's a couple of different options such as running as administrator, uh, you should always run this program as administrator because it does do a number of things to the Windows shell and that requires administrator privileges. There's also appearance and behavior such as dark light and your default system theme. My system theme's in dark, so as you can see, the app is also in dark mode as a result. You can also set it to run as startup, which might be handy if you're using these tools all of the time. And then there's a bunch of update stuff here. But let's get to the actual features. We're gonna walk through these features as we take a look at their settings area, just to give structure to the video. So the first feature here is Fancy Zones, and this allows you to well, as it says here, create window layouts to help make multitasking easy. So if we launch the Fancy Zones editor here, you'll see this window, which will give you a number of different layouts for organizing the open apps on your desktop. So right now it's set to focus. We have columns, rows, grid, priority grid, and we can also create our own custom templates as well. Uh, for now, we'll just use, let's use this one. And we can apply that. So now if I'm dragging a window, there are now areas on the desktop where if I let go, that app will snap to that fancy zone. So let's open up another app here. Let's open up File Explorer. If I drag this around, I can snap that on this side. And let's open up one more just for fun. Let's open up Notepad. And I can snap this one in the middle. And as you can see, they snap perfectly in the fancy zone. There's no messing around or trying to align windows so they look perfect next to each other. This just does it all for you. There's quite a few options here for fancy zones. There's hold shift to activate zones while dragging, hold a non-primary button mouse to activate zones while dragging, override the window snap hotkeys to move windows between zones, and a whole bunch more. You can pause the video to, quick, to, to take a quick read there. Uh, but real quick, I want to launch the editor again just so we can showcase what creating a custom one looks like. So if I click on edit selected layout, we can now add a new zone. And from here, we can move this about as we wish. So if you minimize that, I can change the size of this. Let's see, let's make you that small. Let's add another one. You can go over here and you can be that wide. That's great. Now you can come over here. You can go down there. And then we can add a couple more down here as well. But this is what the sort of process is for creating your own fancy zone. Uh, this is great for those of you who need something a little more specific to your needs, where the default templates aren't, you know, good enough, I guess, for your workflow. You can create your own one. So you can see I've got a whole bunch of ones here. I can save and apply. And now if I'm running a bunch of different windows here, I can snap these to the weird grid that I've just created, which is super nice to see. Grab you there, put you there, notepad, so open you up again. My savior for apps I need demos for and calculator, so why not? There we go. And now using this custom snap template and it's pretty messy. But hey, you get the idea. You can create your own snapping windows and that's super nice. Uh, so that's Fancy Zones in a nutshell. It's part of the Power Toys feature set. Let's turn that off for now because we're done demoing it. We'll move on to the next area and that's File Explorer Preview. Now these are just sort of minor enhancements to the Windows File Explorer that's built into Windows 10. Uh, you have SVG Preview Handler and Markdown Preview Handler. So um, normally without Power Toys, uh, trying when you select on an SVG or Markdown file, um, it won't give you a preview window. We actually have to enable the preview pane here first. For example, if we go into Pictures, and select something with um, the preview pane enabled, you get a little preview on it on the left right side. That's default Windows behavior. That isn't something Power Toys has enabled, but that doesn't usually work for SVG files or Markdown files, unless you have Power Toys installed, in which case that adds SVG support. So if I do that to the SVG file here, you'll see that the SVG file is showing up in the preview pane as you would expect. And the same can be said for the Markdown files here which is super nice indeed. So again, just a minor tweak that changes a couple of things in the file explorer, but if you're somebody who deals with SVG and markdown files on a daily basis, this is a super neat feature to have. 
Up next is Image Resizer, which does exactly what it says on the tin. It allows you to resize images by right clicking inside File Explorer. So you can see here we have a number of images and instead of having to resize one by one, I can just select all three, right click, resize pictures. And now I can resize all of these at the same time. I have the option for small, medium, large, or phone size, or a custom fit if that's what I'm looking for. I can make the pictures smaller but not larger, resize the original pictures, and ignore the orientation of pictures as well. So let's select medium here and resize. And all of those images have now been resized. Look at that, very nice indeed. And you can customize this as you would expect. If you come down to image sizes, you can change the name of it. You can change the fit, stretch or fill mode. You can, you can change the actual resolution and you can change it whether it's pixels, percent, inches or centimeters. And you can even add more sizes if you so please. Uh, here's the encoding settings. By default, it's set to JPEG, but you've got all kinds of different things to choose from here. You can change the JPEG quality, you can change the PNG interlacing, whether it's on or off. You can change the TIFF compression, which is set to default by default. And then you've got the file name formats as well. Moving on to Keyboard Manager, this allows you to change what buttons do on your physical keyboard. So if we select Remap a Key here and press Add, if I select Type Key and then press on a key, let's, for example, let's press on A and select, select OK. I can now make the A key do something else. So if I select Type key again, so let's press L, for example, and press OK. So once that's done, you press on OK. And for some reason, this pops up, but you can ignore this. This is sort of preview software, so there are some bugs here and there. But if you press Continue anyway, this will enable its behavior. So if we go into Notepad and I'm pressing on A here, and I oh know you can't see me pressing A, but I promise I am pressing the letter A and the letter L is showing up instead. Kind of handy if you have keys on your keyboard that you never use and would rather act as something else. For example, I have a keyboard with a fingerprint reader as a button. That button serves no, no other purpose other than being a fingerprint reader. So when I'm inside Windows, I'd like to be able to remap that key and I can do that right here. So if I press on the fingerprint reader key here, that says F24, which is the fingerprint key on my keyboard, press OK. And I can now make that key do something else when inside Windows. For example, I want it to open the start button. So if I press the start button here, press OK and press OK again. So let's continue anyway. Whenever I press F24, which is the fingerprint button, I now get to open the start menu. So that's a super handy way of changing keys on your keyboard. And it's the same for remapping shortcuts. If there's a shortcut you use that you want to do something else, you can change that here. So let's enable a shortcut. So if we do, so if we do control shift escape, which is usually task manager, press okay. We can actually change that to something else. So control shift escape will now be windows A. And windows A, as we all know, is the action center. We press okay. So now if we do control shift escape, that will now open the action center. Of course, that's not a great example, but you get the idea. You can change any existing shortcut to be something else. And that's super nice indeed. So up next is Power Rename, which is very similar to Image Resizer in that it allows you to uh, rename multiple files in File Explorer at the same time. So if we come down to File Explorer here and select on two different files, you can see these have kind of similar names, uh, but I would like to change um, a certain bit of text within these File Explorer names, uh, specifically the client multi-area. I don't want that to be in there. I want to change that to something else. If I select on Power Rename, I am able to change just that. So if I search for cl um, client multi, for example, if I could type, I can now replace that specific text with something else. So in my case, I want home underscore pro because I don't need it to be client multi. I want it to say specifically what these files are. Uh, there's a bunch of different options here. Use regular expressions, be case sensitive, match all occurrences, exclude files and a whole bunch of other things. If I select on rename, you'll see up here that this program will bulk rename both of those at the same time. And now those files have been changed, which, which is super handy if you're somebody who's dealing with multiple files at the same time. You know, instead of renaming one after the other after the other manually, you can use this program to just rename a bunch of them at the same time, which is super nice. Up next is Power Toys Run, which is um, it sort of replaces Windows Search. Now, don't get me wrong, Windows Search is still here and you can still use it. But if you want, you can use this one instead. And to access it, if we minimize all these things here, we press the Alt key and the space bar, and that will bring up this search UI and I can begin typing. So if I want to open, say, an Adobe program, if I type Adobe, you'll see here that all of my Adobe programs are now listed in this sort of drop down menu. I have a couple of options here, such as running as administrator and opening file location. So we've got another one here, Notepad. You can also run things like PowerShell here. 
and there we go. And so a very quick and simple tool for searching your PC. It does apps and documents and stuff, anything local on your device it will search for, just like Windows Search does. Uh, but some people find this to be a little bit more reliable, so that's nice to see. And then finally, the shortcut guide. The shortcut guide is a very simple, well, shortcut guide. If we press and hold the Windows key anywhere on the system, we will get a UI that tells us all of the shortcuts we can do using the Windows key at this very moment. So as I'm holding the Windows key, I could press the X button, for example, and that would pull up the Windows X menu. I could press S for Windows Search. I could press I for Settings, which has opened just in the background, and a bunch of other things, as you can see here. And of course, if and if you actually have a window running when you do this, it will give you a preview of that window here, which is nice to see as well. So that's a very quick look at Power Toys. This is a program that's still being built by Microsoft, so more features can and will be added over time. This is just a sort of snapshot of what's in there today. Um, depending on how old this video is when you see it, there may be even more things in Power Toys for you to mess around with. So make sure you go and give it a try. There's links in the description uh, if you haven't got it yet already. But yes, that's pretty much it for this video. But before you go, a quick message from our sponsor, Dell Technologies. Dell Technologies is making it easier to enable your employees to work from home. Dell has a number of tools that can help your team collaborate and remain productive, no matter where they are, even when the team is spread apart. Products like Dell's 24-inch video conferencing monitor, which has a 1080p webcam, noise cancelling mic, and dual 5 watt speakers built right in for video calls, can help people stay connected during remote meetings using Microsoft Teams or Slack. It also has Windows Hello IR built in as well, for faster and more secure bio-authentication. There's also Dell's UC350 headset that makes it easy to communicate with teammates with a dedicated microphone and stereo over-ear headset, with comfortable padding that should make wearing it for prolonged periods of time easy. Make sure you check out the links in the description to find out more. Thanks Dell Technologies for sponsoring this video. And thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.